What is up, YouTube? Jane's back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Back for Battles. Today, we're using the Megalucario team once again with Megalucario, Snorlax, Veratom Wash, Incineroar, Landis Farian, and Top of Lay. Let's get started. So, it's actually been a little bit since I played Pokemon, and yes, there has been a big bunch of news. So, Thursday, I had midterms, so I've been studying for them. The video you saw on Thursday was recorded on Tuesday, and honestly, I haven't been playing Pokemon at all because I was studying for the midterms so I really haven't played that much I did stream on Tuesday also I guess but like I haven't really played much otherwise and so yeah so bunch of news Thursday we got the news Intimidate Incineroar as well as Liquid was it Liquid Voice I think it's called Primarina plus Long Reach to City Y I'm really excited to try those out they should be some pretty fun Pokemon to try out. I'm definitely looking at um, Incineroar and Primarina. Maybe show this to I some love if I go back to Pledge, which I'm definitely considering. And then we also got Super Smash Bros. for the Switch coming out. And yeah, well, that was announced. So really excited for a bunch of news. But anyway, let's get back into Pokemon. I did play some practice games before. And oh man, trying to get back into it. I choked my win conditions in, bo in both the games I played so hoping I can get back into it. It looks like we got a Mimikyu, Snorlax, Volcarona, Landis Farian, Tapu Koko, and Kangaskhan to kick things off here. Scary looking team although it's a scary looking team in general. Snorlax isn't that great here although it's a good wall. I think I want to go Lele plus Lucario's elite. It seems pretty solid unless he, my opponent elites Landers. With Incineroar, Landers in the back. Yeah, I like that. I guess the only thing this doesn't really cover for is like a Ghost Sim Z on the Mimikyu. I'm thinking the Z move is definitely going to be on the Mimikyu set. Uh, if it is Z move Mimikyu, unless it's Ghostium, it should be like Adamant or Slow because Jolly uh, was it Mimikyu Neum Z. They don't tend to run Jolly. It's really rare for them to run Jolly. So let's see. Jolly Lele Lucario. I'm just hoping for no Volcarona lead. Landers Coco. Okay, that's fine. We get to find out if it's Scarf Landers or not. Coco is faster. Okay. I don't know who you would Volt Switch though. It takes a lot of investment for Landers to labor shower attacky, so I kind of doubt my opponent's going to go for it. Um, Honestly, I do just want to throw off a shower attacky and try to knock out Landers because it is a big threat. I don't know if I want to stay in with Lucario because it could be catching a Gigavolt Havoc, or do I just want to go for a Swords Dance potentially? I could protect, I could go out of my own Landers, which also wouldn't be too bad here. Although I really like the idea of having Landers to switch in for later, so I'm going to just Sword Dance in regular form, I think. Light Screen. Oh, no. Uh, that's probably the one thing I was hoping for. Oh, no. It's the dual screen with Mimikyu Snorlax. Wait, does that mean you're... You shouldn't Earthquake, right? Oh, you're going to Superpower. Oh, no. All right. I messed up big. Well, if this is not Assault Vest Landers... Well, I'm definitely assuming it's the Salt Vest Landers. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's the Salt Vest Landers, I think. Swords Dance here, and then Super Power probably coming out. I would imagine. Oh, it's a knockoff. <gasps> My opponent expected the Landers switch. Let's go, justified. <laughs> I finally got that off. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm doubling up the lander slot because I think this Coco might have Sky Drop too. So I'm going to double up the lander slot. <laughs> Let's go. I don't... That was a terrible play by me. It worked out. <laughs> That's all I know. That's all I'm saying. Actually, maybe I should close combat just in case. I should probably close combat just in case. Light screen. I'm guessing Reflect is going up too. Oh, it's not. Wow, that's just bulky landers. Dual screens going up. Yeah, so at least Lucario's at plus three. I have Taunt on Lele, so I'm not really too worried about my opponent. 
It's gonna fire off a Psychic and a Moonblast. No, Psychic and Meteor Mesh. You can Sky Drop doesn't affect me, so... <laughs> Thank you for the knockoff. Oh man, my opponent definitely expecting was expecting the land to say, but staying in normal form. Oh man, I I can't get enough. That was a terrible play by me, but it worked out. Coco gonna retreat into Volcarona. Huh? Wait, Volcarona? I do it medium match, which is good because I get psychic off into Volcarona. Huh? I honestly thought it was Mimikyu Snorlax in the back. What's in the back then? Good amount of damage. Snorlax? Kang? Coco coming back out. Are you Zemu Coco? I feel like it'd be Scarf Volcarona on this team potentially, but uh, I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna double switch out, even though I have the boost of Lucario. Like, I can beat Snorlax pretty easily, even without the boost. Oh man, all this hype just to KO Landis if I just Meteor Mash turn one. Oh, I should have Meteor Mash turn one, to be honest. It was really rare he was gonna get able to have it turn one. Alright. So I'm gonna double switch out because if you are the Quiver Dance set, which is probably my worst case scenario, I get to fake out Rock Tomb, or I could fake out. Yeah, I can fake out Rockton basically. Thunderbolt gonna go on the Landers and Equip Dance does come out. You should be scared of my Landers. If you're in front of Overdrive on the Volcarone, I guess that makes things a bit scary. Hmm. Yeah, this makes things a little interesting. I'm gonna see though, because I feel, to be honest, if I was my opponent, I hard switch going to Kang, but honestly, I don't want to make a play that's too risky right off the bat, because he could Volt Switch out. But he's gonna withdraw Coco. Is that the Kang? Yep. Okay. He also goes for Volcarona instead of Snorlax. Really interesting here. Yep, gonna be the Protect coming out. Which is fine. Uh, Lele's looking like the most expendable member, question mark. Kinda wish I had low sweep on the incinerator over low kick. Or I could knock off the Volcarona. Go into Lele. Yeah, I kinda like that. I don't really need Lele for too much. I just want- if I knock out Volcarona, I should just be able to win with my Lucario. Because- unless it's Z-move on the, um... Of course, unless it's Z-move on the Coco, but honestly, Flareblast shouldn't KO Volcarona at this range, and if it's a bulky berry, I do want to knock it off for sure. I wonder if my opponent does go for the Fake Out, though. Could be a Fake Out. It could be just like a low kick into Incineroar, but that should proc a berry as Flame Torch that's going to come out. Okay. In Incineroar, so probably trying to get rid of Incineroar. I don't, I don't think low kick will knock it out. Double Edge should proc a berry, I would assume? Yeah, okay. So that's good for me. <sighs> wow. I guess it makes sense because the Lele switch is obvious, but didn't think my opponent would really risk it. Okay. I mean, I do get to knock off a potential item on the Volcarona. Could be Bulky Berry. It is Bulky Berry. Okay, so I don't have to worry about in front of Overdrive. That's good to know. Um, I already wasted my shower at Psyche. How many turns of screens? Uh, he is like Clay Coco confirmed, so it's not the Z move. I guess in Landers was the Z move then? I'm doubly on Volcarona. Is that the right play? If I double up Volcarona, the problem is if he protects and tries to double edge my Lele, for instance, I'm in a bit of trouble. I'm gonna low kick Psychic D Kang. Get rid of Kang. Because honestly, I think Landers can win if I just get rid of Kangaskhan. Now that I think about it, yeah, it's actually really likely I do. So, Giga Drain actually coming out into Lele? Trying to get health back. Maybe to live a Psychic? Oh, with Light Screen, you probably can. Okay. Double Edge gonna knock out Incineroar, but how much does Psychic do to Kang? How much does Psychic do to Kang? Should do a fair amount. 
It actually just knocks it out, even through light screen. Okay, Lele putting in some work. And yeah, I honestly don't see what my opponent has to beat the... Okay, Lucario is now expendable in this game. This was a really weird game. <laughs> the knockoff turn one was super clutch. Super clutch. I definitely shouldn't have stayed in with Lucario. Or at least just Meteor Mash, because I think Meteor Mash and Shadow Psyche should have done it. Well, if it was a Salt Vest Landis, I guess that's the thing I was gambling on. Let's see. I mean, it's not over, depending on the Coco's moveset. We saw Light Screen Reflect. We don't know if it's like Nature's Madness or something. Although I think Earthquake plus Protect is fine. Or, I don't know, I actually go on to Lucario. Sack Lucario to the Earthquake so I can bring in my Coco. I mean, bring back my Lele, and then Psychic threatens even more damage on the Volcarona. I think that's always the play. Because I'd rather get more damage if possible. You're going to Giga Drain instead, the Landers. Okay. You don't have a move that can knock out. You can knock me out with a Coco. Thunderbolt into the Lele. Okay. So Lucario wasn't useful anymore because of the fact I think it went down to every move. Earthquake going to come out. Should get some damage. I didn't want to risk Volcarona protecting Nature's Man is coming in front of Coco because I think that was the only way I would 100% lose. This way I get my uh, Lele in. And to be honest, I'm thinking Earthquake should get me to win. Yeah, Earthquake should get me. Hmm. I mean, the Coco doesn't tend to run Protect. I don't think Flamethrower knocks on my land or set this range at all. You would have to have HP Ice. And if you have HP... You know what? Earthquake Psychic and Volcarona is always my play, I feel like. Because you're going to Flamethrower and hope you can knock out my Landers. Which it doesn't unless you crit or burn. Nice. And Thunderbolt in the top of the list. I don't think it carries HP Ice. So, Psychic going to come out, knock out the Volcarona. And Earthquake's just going to knock out. I think this was my, was my best potential play. Because to be it covered pretty much every option that my opponent did. If, if you had like a move that can target down Landers. Actually, if you had Gleam. If you had Gleam, you might have been able to win. Actually, if my opponent did have Gleam, I think he won. Because I thought my opponent was going to expect me to protect right there. Oh, man. Not really happy about how I played that game at all. Really not. But we do end up with a win after a crazy turn one scenario where, to be honest, if I ever get the knockoff justified, I would think it would be into the Snorlax. <laughs> like, baiting it out. But, like, ended up getting the justified boost. It only... It didn't come in handy at all. It really didn't matter at that point. But we got it. We got it. That's one of my goals. But <laughs> did we get like three points from that battle? <laughs> oh. But yeah. Uh, turn one could have definitely, definitely been scary. I knew he wasn't probably going to Earthquake, to be honest, turn one. Because I feel like um, Shadow Attack, he would have not... Does the light screen damn like the Shadow Psyche just doesn't do as much usually? Because I remember Shadow Psyche doing a lot more through light screen. Isn't it the same way? Well, Assault Vest is 1.5 your special defense. Light screen decreases moves by I think in doubles is like 0.67. Maybe it does work like that. I'm not sure. I think maybe Shadow Psyche just does more to uh Assault Vest Landers than it does through light screen, but hmm. But yeah, turn one, definitely a big misplay. Medium Ash would have definitely been the play. And then, yeah, because it, then it would have been the same scenario, except I would have taken, that I wouldn't have risked the Landers in two, like, getting rid of Landers was pretty nice early on. So maybe, yeah, turn one, Shadow Psyche into Medium Mash, then switch out the, um, switch out the double switch, and then it would probably have played from there, and it would probably have been the same results. But, yeah, what an interesting game. I was... I do apologize. I fe I'm not back. I don't think I'm back to um, back to playing state yet or good playing state yet. But hopefully I'll be able to regain uh, what I lost. As we found a 7044 radio player from Japan as our uh, second opponent of the day. With the team of... Oh. Okay. One of these. Tapalele, Zapdos, Tyranitar, Landers Fame, Metagross, and 
Fungus. I don't remember what I used against this. I think it was... I think I had Rotom Wash and Cinnaroar and then had Lele plus Lucario on the back. I'm pretty sure that's what I usually go. Yeah. I guess the question is, does the Metagross have Zen Headbutt? Because if it has Zen Headbutt, then we have some concerns. Yeah, but... I'll say I really want to lead Tapu Lele. You know what? I think Tapu Lele and Cinderella is actually pretty good as a lead. With Rotom Wash and Lucar on the back. I think I actually did lead. Want to lead Lele uh, and Cinderella against this team. And I think turn one, I think it's like Shadow Psychic or Psychic Flare Blitz. Yeah, because since my opponent doesn't have way to change terrains, I think I go Lele and draw off a Shadow Psychic right off the bat because this team, uh, Zapdos and the Landers don't usually carry Protect. I also get to scout for. um. Abilities like what kind of items my opponent could have one. It could be like a fast Aptos Two, it could be a scarf landers. We get to confirm those right away Wonder where the Z move is It's always a question of what to play because there's a lot of differences like um, Electrium tends to be the most common on the Z moves for um, For Zapdos or, or Lele. It's either usually Lele's the Z move I've also seen landers and Zapdos with Z move. So this team has some flexibilities so, we have to figure out what kind of sets they are. Is it Assault Vest Land? Is it a Choice Scarf? I mean, every single... Even though it's the same six, we see a lot in the format. Since, it, you know, this one did win Oceania Regionals. I mean, not Regionals, Internationals. But, like... Okay, it was kind of a Regional. It was, like, 200 people. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, but the fact is that... Even though it's the same six, there's a lot of changes. Depending on how the player likes to play it. As Zapdos and Metagross is going to be Okay. Ooh. Rotom Watch would have been a better lead in this scenario. Alright, but we have to find out what kind of Zapdos this is. It's not fast Zapdos, okay. If you want a Stomping Tantrum, that's fine. Because that should activate my Barry and then I'll live a Thunderbolt from the Zapdos. I think the only thing I wouldn't live would be a Gig World Havoc double up. Which would be really smart on my opponent's part, but there's not much I can do if you have that. I guess I really don't want to risk Lele here. Although, like, it's really obvious that Lele, like, you're in the Incineroar's threat, and Lele could protect or switch out. I honestly want to go aggressive turn one, just because if I do get the aggression right, I just am able to pick up a huge knockout, so I think I'm going to try it. Either wise, I get a lot of damage on the Metagross. Zapdos gets a Tailwind up, but then I can Electroweb. Yeah, I think I'd be fine. Oh, Zapdos is going to withdraw. Into Lele. Does that mean you're protecting or switching out into... Or are you going for... What are you going for? Protect? Stop me Tantrum in an Incineroar slot? Either way, I'm fine with that because I just got a bunch of damage on your Lele. Yeah, it's me Tantrum as I anticipated, so... Wait, won't that put me in Blaze and maybe not activate my bear? Oh! Wait, is that Blaze range? It is Blaze range, right? Because Blaze is 33. I might be training my Incineroar and my Z-Move for damage on Lele and that Metagross. But damn it, that Metagross is so huge for my Mega Lucario. I'll take that. I'll honestly take that. We take that to the bank. Because Incineroar's main job is to handle the Metagross. So I'll get the damage on Lele. How much does this do? Could be a good amount. Oh, that's beautiful damage. Oh my. That's a resist too. And this is why we run Blaze. This is why we don't run Intimidate. I don't have an Intimidate Incineroar, by the way. Gone. Oh, that is clean. Okay. And we live and get the berry back. Oh, Incineroar. Blaze Incineroar is the best. Screw Intimidate. Who needs Intimidate Incineroar? And you got Blaze. When we can knock out a Metagross and win it guaranteed with Blaze. Oh, that's, that's actually beautiful. Okay, nice. All right, so what's my opponent go into Landers? I can see Landers coming in. Yep. Cinnor still has value, but I do still don't know what item my opponent's Landers is. I could Moonblast. I could just Psychic the Lele though and go out into Rotom. You could Earthquake here. Yeah, I think Rotom's expendable here. I don't think you Earthquake immediately. I mean, you can. You definitely can. But then I feel like you'll be forced to switch out next turn. If you're not Scarf. If you're Scarf, you can lock yourself into the um, Earthquake. 
You could also go for super power. U-turn potentially, although... Would you U-turn here? I don't really think you do. So this is really nice here because I am threatening the Lele unless... Yeah, because there's not one move Landers can hit me with that isn't a Z-move that can knock out my Lele unless it's Life Orb or Choice Banded. And if it is Banded, he has to switch out the following turn, I feel like. Uh, or he could switch out Lele in his Aptos, that also makes sense. So I'll go Rotom here. Just a Rock Slide, and it is Scarf. Ooh, we avoid uh, Lele. Which, damage rise, it would have done a good amount, but like, as long as it didn't flinch me, I was fine either way. Oh, he, he gets the Shadow Techie off. Okay. Fair. Fair, 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 but... I mean... Yeah, that's fine. I get to bring out Lucario. So Lele going to take the Shared Psyche. Actually, because of Rock Slide, I do survive it. So the Speed Tie, winning the Speed Tie there, uh, would have been helpful if he hit the Rock Slide. But since I forgot I was at full health, it will knock out the Lele. So really fortunate here. Really fortunate. Because now the Landers is locked in the Rock Slide. I mean, if it missed, I would have just gone out, out in a Lucario, I feel like. I would have probably clicked Sword Stance plus Electro up, expecting Lele to protect, but like, even then, even if Lele attacked, as long as I got the knockout onto Lele, I think I was fine. Actually, maybe I probably would have Hydro Pump the Lele to guarantee the knockout. Then Lander, since Aptos is forced to come in, and then the Rotom plus Lele, I feel like... I... Yeah, Rot... No, Rotom plus Incineroar would have probably been able to finish off the job with Fake Out Hydro Pump, since it's Scarf Landers, that probably would have knocked it out, yeah. I think I was fine either way. Well, then again, Zapdos could PP stall me if Roost. Oh well, uh, since you're locked into Rockside Landers, I'm gonna Wisp. And I guess I'll just fire for Psychic into the Landers at this point. Don't really need to keep Lele alive for anything. If you're gonna go for Rockside, that's fine. I do have the option to fake out plus will o -Wisp the following turn by getting in my Incineroar, which would be nice. Although I should probably start dealing with the Zapdos because the Zapdos is a bit problematic. So, Rock's like gonna come out, target down, knock out my Lele. Tailwind actually gonna go up. Hmm. Maybe fearing the Megalucario on the back? Or I'm just gonna flinch, which is okay. I'm going in Incineroar. Click fake out and Hydro Pump. I'll risk Hydro Pump now since I'm not having to deal with Rock Slide also flinching me. And Thunderbolt's not going to knock me out. Fake out a Hydro Pump will knock out Landorus. Unless it's like a really bulky Landorus. But on Scarf, you tend to run maybe semi-bulky. But you definitely don't run like a really bulky set. Like an AV set. The Hydro Pump. And Fake Out. I mean, this game's definitely not over yet. Because my opponent does have like so many chances to flinch here. Pretty sure it's going to be like a Thunderbolt into Rotom. And a... I think it's a Thunderbolt and a Rotom, I and mean, obviously just a Rock Slide. So there could be crit chances, there could be misses, there are a bunch of things that could happen. At this point, I'm seeing like this is the best way out. And then if I can get maybe a light screen up, that would be really nice. Or should I Electro Whip? I think I should Electro Whip early because then I could light screen up after. If Thunderbolt procs me in the berry, because I'm hoping Thunderbolt does proc me in the berry, because if it doesn't. I'm pretty sure Rotom would be 2 KO'd by Thunderbolt, and that could be a little bit problematic. So let's see here. I don't think Grit would knock me out, but we'll see. Fake out, and Thunderbolt into the Rotom. It does proc my berry, okay. And Crit, I don't think it would actually knock me out. Uh, it might have been a, might have a chance. Okay, we hit Aisha <laughs> Oh, Rotom. It's inaccurate moves. Oh my. Oh my survived not good actually that's fine isn't it yeah that's fine I can wisp the landers and go on Lucario you're not gonna heat wave you're definitely gonna rock slide plus um you're gonna rock slide plus Thunderbolt the Rotom anyway you actually rock slide the Incineroar? I guess I'd be fine too, to be honest, because then I could just fake out and Electro Web. So let's see, Lucario here. Rock slide. 
And Thunderbolt's not gonna knock out Rotom. If it flinches, I guess that's a bit annoying, but not the worst case. And I hit Willowis. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Nice. Hmm. What's the best potential? What's the best potential wind condition that I have? If anything's going on in Sinnoh, I'm protecting. Then I can fake out Sword Stance and then close combat, Flare Blitz. I like that. Yeah. There's a game. Okay. Because Fundable's not going to knock out Sinnoh. It's his last turn of Tailwind. Yeah, this works. Because I'll go in Cineroar. Thunderbolt would put me in Blaze range. I can fake out the Zapdos. Sword Stance. Then I can close combat Flare Blitz because that should be able to pick up the knock on Zapdos. I guess if it doesn't, we're in a little bit of trouble. Although, Adaptability plus two close combat plus the fake out plus a Flare Blitz. Uh, if it's Citrus Berry, I guess maybe it could survive. Although, I guess we'll find out. I'm willing to take the risk anyway. And Incineroar might be able to live the recall. Yeah, I think Incineroar would actually live the recall anyway. Even not the Flare Blitz, I don't think there would be a way for my opponent to win. So let's see what you do here. Thunderbolt Rotom, I think. Oh, it's a Heat Wave. Okay. Uh... Quick Swing's interesting. Because I'm not in Blaze anymore, so that, that calc's out of the way. I guess I get to find out how much I do with um, the fake out damage. Let's see, how well should Zapdos take it? If it does like 15%, it should be an offensive Zapdos, so Flare Blitz plus close combat should get the knockout. Otherwise, we're playing a bit of a mind game. Let's see. If I Sword Sense here. Close combat plus two. If it's offensive, 60. Probably proc the Citrus Berry. Let's see. Oh, that does look like defensive Zapdos. I could also knock off, but the problem is do you Tailwind here expecting that? Well, if you Tailwind, I don't think you actually live a combination anyway. So I'm going to knock off, try to see your Berry, and then protect. Thunderbolt doesn't knock on Incineroar. And then I'd be able to Flare Blitz the uh, Zapdos Close Combat the following turn. The problem is if you Thunderbolt get a full pair on Incineroar or your crit here. Uh, crit's probably the worst case, but let's see. Do you Tailwind or do you go straight for an attack? That is the main question. I don't think Thunderbolt knocks out Lucario or Heat Wave. I could go for Medium Ash. The problem is if I miss and then he crits my Lucario. I feel like you do have to target Lucario. I could definitely see you going for Tailwind here though. So I just want to improve my odds as much as possible. And I feel like this does. Yeah, you're going to go for the Heat Wave. Okay. That should secure me the game. Uh, I feel like I am in Blaze range after this, which is good. Get rid of your item. Oh, wow. That did a lot more than I expected. It's actually a 50% berry, too. I don't know. I don't think Close Combat... What did Close Combat put it out uh, it, at that range? I'm not sure. But this should 100 secure my game because Close Combat's going to pick up the knockout. Like, worst case scenario, close combat, able to put in the barrier range, Zapdos survives, then maybe Heat Wave crits my Incineroar and my Rotom, I'd be, I'd lose the game. Which is why I didn't want to go straight for it. I felt like as long as you don't create or pair my Incineroar, which is a more unlikely target, I feel like, because you should be targeting on Lucario, because Lucario is going to 2 a KO you. You're either going to tail in that position, or you're going to target Lucario somehow, because uh, Lucario is just going to be doing too much damage to the Zapdos. As Incineroar, maybe you tank a hit or two. Which is why I decided to go for that. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode of VGC 2018 Back to Battles. Uh, surprisingly, I'm able to get two wins. But like like I said before, the first game, don't feel like I played well like at all. So hopefully, I'm going to be able to play better in the next episode. But thank you all for tuning in today's episode of VGC 2018 Back to Back Battles. If you did, please leave a like down below. Show support. As well as you can check out the rest of my stuff down below. So this is my social medias, the previous episodes, and of course the QR code team. I'll probably update the QR code team once I get into my Incineroar. But currently I do not have one. So it's probably going to take me a few days to get it in game and stuff. So look forward to that as well as like 
all my social medias, my Twitch channel, which I do stream and do stream viewer vows, and I should be streaming viewer vows uh, Saturday, which is uh, either probably the day you're watching this video or the day after, depending on what time zone you are in. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in today's episode. As I said before, feel free to check out the rest of my stuff down below and leave a comment because I do read them. Otherwise, yeah, see you around in another video. Have a good day, people. See you around soon.